thermometer that is able to detect up to 256 Gs, and it can automatically notify emergency services and emergency contacts if you are in a severe car crash. If you have both Apple Watch and iPhone... <laughs> That's right, today we are going to be putting crash detection to the ultimate test. I think I speak for a lot of us when I say that we were curious what type of crashes would constitute a severe crash and trigger the iPhone to detect. But more broadly, I wanted to test this on a wide range of devices that support this, from the new iPhones to the Apple Watch Ultra and even Google's Pixel phones, which can also detect crashes. But one thing became clear right away, and that's that if I am going to be putting these $1,000 phones in cars and crashing them, they're going to need some protection. And that came from today's video sponsor, Rhino Shield. Rhino Shield cases offer 360 degree protection with case and screen protector that offers stronger than military grade protection. Plus there's endless customization with prints, colors, buttons, and camera rings you can swap out as well as collabs with awesome creators. Plus for even more style and utility, try Grip Mini and Grip Max. Adjustable grips that attach to the back of your device and slide open for for a comfortable phone grip. Grip Mini comes in adhesive variants and Grip Max can even come with MagSafe, which is two times stronger than Apple's official MagSafe accessories. If you wanna keep your phone secure from drops and car crashes, check out the link in the description below and use code LUKECRASH to save 20% off in the first week this video is live. A big thanks to Rhino Shield for sponsoring, and now let's talk about what we're going to need to pull this off. Apple claims that their motion sensor with a high dynamic range gyroscope, as well as a high G accelerometer, GPS, barometer, and microphone all work together to determine if you've been in a car crash. So theoretically, in order to test this out, we want to find the point at which all of those factors converge and the iPhone is able to determine that you've been in a crash. So with all of this in mind, it was clear that I'm not gonna be able to do it here in my studio in Washington, DC. I was gonna need some help. So we got the YouTubers, we got the iPhone 14 Pros, we got the Apple Watch Ultras. Now all we need is a car. So I'm thrilled to introduce to you the 1999 Nissan Altima GXE. Never before has there been such a magnificent automobile, but I think we can actually make it a little bit more magnificent, which we're gonna need. She needs some work. Oh yeah. Superb. <laughs> With the Ultima souped up, we headed down to a field to start testing. So if you do have an iPhone with crash detection, you wanna make sure that it's not gonna just go off all the time if you're, let's say, a little careless. Don't I get a car? I don't want to sit in this piece of junk. No, yeah, look, look, look. I got you one right here, bro. Oh my God, is this the new Tesla Roadster? No, it's a Cybertruck, man. Look at that 
beautiful interior. Wow. It appears if my coat is a bit smaller than yours, Mr. Luke. These are the exact same size. So I think it's time that we introduce some science to this whole crash testing business, don't I you think, think it's Sam? Time. So Apple claims that the iPhone 14 series, as well as the new Apple Watch Ultra and Series 8, can detect four types of crashes. Hmm. Front end, rear end, side impact, and rollover. That's a lot of crashes. We're gonna have to test all of those, but I think the best place to start is to make sure that it's not a little bit too trigger happy, that it's not just going off all the time if you're just being a little bumpy. Other. I have a hard time seeing the other cars. It's I think I'm gonna go for a drive. Let's go for a drive. It's a lovely day to go for a drive with my iPhone 14 Pro. Hey, uh, how's it going there? Do you know the way to the store by any chance? Yeah. Hey, you're getting a little close there, pal. Hey, hey, could hey. you could you not hit me like that? Hey, watch out, man. Hey, hey, hey that mirror's a little close. Hey, bro. Right, I'm gonna send it in this direction. I don't really like the way you're driving. No respect. Hey! <laughs> ah! Stay on that side. You stay I'm, on this side. I'm turning. I'm turning. I'm turning left. I'm turning. I'm backing up. <laughs> We're not backing up. My car don't work. Let me uh. I just love this the country of Ohio. It's really beautiful. Is that is that I think that might be a goose? Hey, I'm gonna hit ya. I think that was a goose. You'll tell me when I get too close to like anything behind me, right? Yeah, no, I'll let okay. you know if you're getting too close. Yeah, no, I just I can't see super well. So like I don't know, there's like some <sighs> Was a crash detected? <sighs> no. No, no crash. And you didn't tell me that we were close. You said I was fine. That was a big hit. Well, we was took a... out the whole window of the bourbon. I mean, the first one was like a tap, and it was just like that was like a fender bender. This was like you got your, your kid's gonna be smoked. <laughs> your kid is gonna. I think I think we need to up the speed here. We have not gotten it to go off yet. You're saying we have to we have to go further than any car crash video has gone before. Absolutely. With two iPhone 14s in the already crashed Suburban, as well as a 14 Pro Max and Pixel 6 Pro in our Dodge Dakota pickup, we lined up for another go. None of our three iPhone 14s were able to pick up this crash. However, they were safely protected from the impact thanks to the Rhino Shield cases. At this point, we're starting to get confused. Of course, the main point of this video is to try to figure out at what point Apple or Google for that matter determine that a crash is severe enough. Is it sound? Is it G-force? Is it speed? According to data from NHTSA, most traffic accidents occur in local urban areas at speeds under 40 miles an hour. So it stands to reason that you shouldn't have to be going that fast to have a severe crash. <laughs> So the bed is fully buckled. That door is unbelievably toasted. Dude, it literally put a hole in the door. We slammed it three times in reverse into the side of this truck. Apparently, this is not severe enough to trigger the car crash detection. So what do we what do we do next? I so, feel like we're out of ideas. I'm finding it very hard to believe that none of these crashes are getting picked up on. I mean, I guess they position it as, as a severe crash detection. Yeah, I mean, but, of course so. They, you know, they gotta cover the bases, but it's yeah. like, this is pretty, I mean, I would argue this is severe. I think that just about does it. It's time to step things up a notch. This is Extreme Bumper Cars 2, The Reckoning. Bro, that looks so sad. After a week start, the boys really kicked it up a notch. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it has to go off, right? I paid 400 bucks for that car. How 
With hit after hit, our demolition derby started to become a ballet of mayhem. is just off into the fields. Oh my god, you're right. However, after minutes of hard impacts and completely destroying our poor Altima, still no crashes had been detected. Look at that. No crash. No crash. I'd say that's a pretty severe crash. So somehow a crash has still not been detected. Dude, look at this car. Let's just get some close-ups on some of the small damage here. That that First looks of pretty all, severe. The radiator, as you might be able to see, is evacuating. But where things uh, where things really got bad was in the back. Let's take a look. Come with me. So I don't know about you, but that looks kind of crashed. You know, Luke, I'm not an expert in this uh, this field, but I will say that certifiably is a severe crash. And yet, nothing was detected, which means we have to step it up yet again. Dude, at this one, I don't believe it's happening. <laughs> We what have to get more, it to detect! What more can we do, Luke? We have to make it crash detect! It's done! More! Detected. This car's fine. Nothing. Dude, Nothing at all. What are these coats for? <laughs> Dude, we have science coats for it's what? It's supposed to be detected. Oh my god. With daylight fading, we lined up for an extreme unmanned crash test. So what we've got lined up for you guys here is a real doozy. This is our target, and we're gonna put a couple of phones, maybe one or two, in here to test for a side impact, and then we've got a pretty nasty looking Chevy Cobalt that is gonna get towed right into this guy. And as a bonus, Sam has been testing the Apple Watch Ultra. And it's been really impressive. You guys should watch the video, link down below. But we think this might take it over the edge when the car go like that. With this many phones and a crash this big, we thought surely, surely the iPhones would be able to pick up something. <laughs> Nothing? What? Neither phone detected anything. Bro. Nothing? The watch didn't really get hit, but like, I mean, it was there. With still no crashes being detected, we decided it was time for the big one. A downhill rollover crash test.
There's so much glass, be careful. No crash detected? Bro, what? Oh my God. Are you serious? Hey, I'll tell you what though, that Rhino Shield case sure did a great job of protecting it. Look, it's totally fine in there. But that was a full rollover. Look at the look at the roof of this car. That is toast. You join us here in this strange 70-year-old metal house to recap the events of yesterday's crash testing. Dude, can I just say something? Yeah. It didn't work. <laughs> At all. <laughs> like, like well, how did we get here? They, they made so many ads about it, and that was one of the big selling points next to the satellite SOS on the iPhone 14, which we're hopefully going to test later. But right now, that's all we had to test safety-wise. And we got in so many accidents and it didn't work. And the cars were absolutely loaded with phones. As we were driving around, we had two iPhones on the dash. We had a Pixel 6. We had multiple iPhone 14s in the pockets of the occupants of the car during the demolition derby. So we had like four or five total. We had Apple Watches for my video. Yeah, we had three Apple Watch Ultras and a Series 8. I mean, obviously nobody got injured, yeah, so yeah. I guess Apple would make the argument that these are for severe crashes where you're not responsive. If anything, I guess this does kind of uh, assuage some people that were worried that they were gonna like trip and then it was gonna be like, you've been in a car crash. No, <laughs> No, worry. you gotta be going like 50, bro. <laughs> Dude, we rolled over a car though. How did I know. you know <laughs> There's no way the accelerometer would not hear a crash and then go feel itself go like that. <laughs> like I get front side impact, that could be, yeah. you know, something less dramatic, but I mean that was That was bad. That was undeniable. That was, bad. that was pretty bad. I guess either we wait for someone else to do a bigger crash or we find a way to crash at like 60 miles an hour. I think we wait for someone else. <laughs> I think we wait for someone else. Thank we you guys. Our, we did our best. We did our best. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know down below if you think Apple has some work to do here. And with that, we will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.